All right, OAS family, we are here with another book review today, and we are reviewing a book in a series of books called How to Paint. That is the name of the series. And the name of this book is How to Paint Landscapes with Light Coloration. So it's book number 13 in the series, and uh, just some general statistics about the book. Uh, this is sort of like a pocket size, not a pocket size, but it's easy to hold in your hand. It's a smaller size book, uh, and the width is five and three quarters wide by eight and a quarter inches high. So it's a great small book, and the style of it is reference style. So uh, it's really nice, you know, handheld book to take on the go. All of them are great in the series for that. So we will go ahead and get into it. Oh, the other thing is that the uh, text in the book is all Chinese, but you can see here that uh, the pictures in themselves are quite useful. So I wouldn't write the book off just because the text is in Chinese. And if you are unable to re read Chinese, I think you will still find some value in this book. And the total amount of pages in the book is 95 pages. So we're gonna start in at the beginning. And you can see here some just elemental work about how to render mountain groupings. Let me start simpler, showing that off. And here some tree. And then they build up this simple composition here that has both rocks and trees. We were just very accessible. You know what I like about these little simple compositions is they just seem accessible and a lot of times we don't start to paint something because it just looks too complicated but really a complex thing is just a combination of a bunch of simple things so it's good to start with these little simpler groupings to just build your confidence and then when you see a more complex painting you'll start to say oh if this is just three of the simpler groups put together with some shading and then we're done so you can, it, it can be a really good way to build your confidence. And I love this little simple grouping on the, on the right hand side here that they build up in this sequential way. They just show you the rocks, then the rocks with the tree, then they add another tree, then they sort of fill in the trees. Uh, and you know, if you just painted that, it would be a great little painting unto itself and it would be a good confidence builder. So really great to try. So we get some light outlines here of mountains on both sides. So this is sort of the line work on the left hand side and how they fill it in on the right hand side. You can see the sort of finished composition where they're adding the trees and the houses. So this is sequential here. We got the line work and then they start to fill it in with the shading, and then they add the details. Another simple painting here with sequential, sort of one, two, three on this, uh, one, two, three, four on this rock element. Just these books are great just to get composition ideas, you know, just to see how they lay out these mountain groupings in a way that's pleasing and make use of the white space. It's really effective. And this right hand side here are different ways of rendering smaller elements in the distance, both trees and textures, rocks. So we've got this little bold foreground element isolated here. So you can see it isolated here within detail and then see it here in the context of the final composition. You see it here and then they built this background to it. Really nice. I'm liking this book. Really a lot. Love this. This is like sort of Three Gorges style, like before they built the dam. I remember going on that trip with my parents down, down the river with the Three Gorges, and you can't see that view anymore because they dammed it up and they raised the water level, but uh, this, is, this is what it was like. You know, you see the boat going down into these really, really tall gorges. Really nice. 
So you can see here the rock elements, some of the rock elements that they use in this painting isolated here on this side. Have this painting featuring the sailboat, which is really nice. Again, this little simple painting here, we had the mountains in the foreground and they show this little lake in the distance. First color bit in there. You can see this little king or rest stop here with this tree in the foreground. This bold rock element here, isolated, and they build this here. Here it is with some background added to it. A lot of really, really nice content in this book. Also, I want to encourage people, if you have like a background in painting Western watercolor and you've sort of struggled with like the more traditional subjects like Four Gentlemen that were more single strokes, felt more like calligraphy, I think if you do landscape painting, you will really um, find it experientially closer to Western watercolor. Of course, it's not exactly the same, but given that landscape painting is typically done on semi-sized paper where there's a lot more forgiveness and there's a lot more manipulating the strokes after they're on the paper, uh, you'll find, I think, um, a lot more familiar techniques or familiar experiences if you're used to doing Western watercolor. This is really lovely with these like fall colors featured here. This painting is absolutely gorgeous with that pine tree in the foreground and it kind of looks out to this. So this is kind of the promise of the book where, where it's kind of talking about this light coloration. So it's using these lightly colored elements to, to show perspective and distance. So some techniques for doing this is you can actually wet the paper first before you're painting these uh, elements that are in the background. So you paint the foreground elements and then you can wet the paper and you can apply these sort of more diluted colors onto this wet paper, uh, uh, slightly, slightly misted paper, and then you get these sort of light, more feathered colors that suggest things are in the distance. Same here over here with that little distance element and that pagoda. This is a little breakdown on trees. Really nice couple paintings here. Now we're not even one third of the way through the book and I found so many things here that are really wonderful. This, this piece, it's hard to see. It's kind of like very, very light in coloration, but it's so wonderful compositionally and simple too. Yeah, if you're feeling like overwhelmed this is a really good simple composition to start with it's just not a lot of elements here just this one and this one this one here and of course the one the detailed one in the foreground so this is the one that's going to take kind of some more practice but once you sort of get this one down then you can paint through these two some trees rocks here Little background mountain with some pine tree foreground. More majestic, bigger thing showing these mountain peaks in the distance. Little tree and rock detail here.
bringing in a broader color palette showing little pops of something that is outside the spectrum of these sort of mineral blues and greens that you see dominating. They're starting to bring in these tans to do the tree trunks and these pops of color for foliage. So lovely, so many really great paintings in this book. Wow, that one is amazing. I don't know if you've ever been to China before, but a lot of times people see Chinese landscapes and they go, yeah, it just, these aren't, they're not realistic. No, nobody, no place has mountains that look like that. But actually in China, the mountains do look like that. They're really jagged and super vertical. Uh, they're very unusual. Really great riverbank scene here. And then look at that painting. God, I'm trying to get out of it. I'm trying to get away from the glare so you can see it. Really nice. really lovely just the textures and the colors in this have such harmony this painting has a wonderful look of antiquity because of that background color again here how they show these simple ways that they fade the color in the background to give that sense of things off in the distance. Now we're starting to get into some very, very light ink work here. It's really cool looking. Really, really lovely, these paintings. It is like a single figure looking off into an expanse of mountains and clouds. It's really nice and a theme that you see a lot in Chinese style landscape painting. This is this fan-shaped painting. It's very sort of long and narrow ink piece. It's vertical waterfall.
another sort of river running through the gorges composition. Another one showing banks against a body of water. Really nice. First one featuring snow. So we're getting to the end of the book. Wow, finishing with such a flurry here. Look at this, how striking that is. Just beautiful and how they sort of created a lot of this negative space that balances that off on the right hand side. And again, you see the things fading in the distance, creating a sense of like that depth. So that's it. That's book number 13 in the How to Paint series called How to Paint Landscapes with Light Coloration. So you can pick it up at our website at orientalartsupply.com. Thanks so much for listening to this review. We hope you enjoyed it and happy painting.